I am sitting down with Jennifer Boyd Kaplan. Uh, and we're going to be talking about uh, her new book, Crushing the Red Flowers. Did I say that right? Is it Kaplan or Kaplan? Kaplan. Kaplan. Sorry about that, Jennifer. Jennifer, how are you today? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you so much for uh, clearing the time. This is launch week uh, as we're talking. So I know you've got to be running around just like a like a, a writer who just launched a book. <laughs> exactly. How is your launch week going? So far, so good. We launched just a couple days ago on Tuesday, and I have my launch party coming uh, this Saturday. Oh, very exciting. Where is your launch party going to be held? In Madison, New Jersey, at the Short Stories Bookstore. Three o'clock. And what, uh, what sort of exciting events do you have planned for the party? Well, we have a number of giveaways. We'll have an author Q&A, um, of course, some delicious German-themed foods, uh, and a book signing. Fantastic. And of course, uh, I assume everyone that's ever known or loved you will be there and saying, oh, Jennifer, we're so proud of you. This is such a momentous occasion. It is wonderful uh, to have your friends and family support you as a debut novelist. I went to a launch party. Uh, well, I'm just going to go ahead and say your name. She won't mind. Uh, Annie Sullivan, previous guest. If you haven't listened to her episode, esteemed audience, go back and check it out. It's a wonderful episode. Uh, I went to her launch party for Tiger Queen. And it was bigger than a lot of the weddings I've been to. <laughs> it was <Wow>. just tremendous. <laughs> Fantastic. So since I'm talking to you here at, at, at launch week, um, what for all the authors out there who yearn to be where you are now at the launch of their book, um, what, uh, what all has gone into planning this week and what all do you have before you? Well, there's been quite a lot of planning. There's... Um, between the time uh, an author gets his or her contract and release, uh, the amount of stuff going on, it could be a full-time job. And can, you know, the marketing, um, the PR, the organization of it all really uh, takes a lot of time. So quite a lot of stuff has, has gone on and will continue to go on. Sure. That'll keep you busy. And then eventually, I suppose you might want to sit down and, and get back to writing at some point. Oh, yeah, my happy place. Yes. <laughs> During the launch of a book, is that even a consideration? I'm going to write this week or do you say, nope, this week I'm going to launch and then maybe I'll get back to it next week? You know, I I've, I've consciously and unconsciously have kept writing um, truly is my happy place. Uh, when I have something wonderful going on in my life, how do I celebrate? I, I take an hour and I write. If I have something sad going on in my life, I take an hour and I write and it makes me feel better. So um, I view writing as a treat almost. So yes. So during um, my my actual launch day, which was two days ago, I treated myself. It was my celebratory, you know, figurative glass of champagne. I treated myself, even though I was super busy and had plenty of things to do. I wanted to take the time and just celebrate. And I, I wrote and it made me happy. Anything in particular, just something that uh, spoke to you at that moment that I want to write this just for my own, my own pleasure. Well, I'm always puttering around with a few novel ideas. So if I'm uh, talking to you and it's not launch week, what does your usual writing schedule look like? So I, in an ideal world, and of course this is difficult, um, I do have three children, school-aged children. It, you know, I have a family. Um, I do a, a lot of volunteer work in my town, but what I love would love to carve out is two hours a day of writing. Um, and perhaps uh, now with the book coming out, um, one hour a day of marketing activities. That would be ideal if I could maintain that schedule every day, five days a week. So one hour, um, uh, I know, can be extremely useful for somebody that's, that's on it, that's disciplined, that comes that comes in and like, we're doing this. Yeah. Uh, for me, an hour is, I, I've stared off and written maybe 30 to 40 minutes of that hour. Um, oh. How do you maximize that hour if, you've only, if you're only going to get one in for the day? For marketing, for marketing activities? Oh, well, for both. Okay, so for writing, I do not write at home. I go to coffee shops. And I unplug my phone, I unplug my internet, um, and just being out of the house really allows me to focus. The background noise is good for me. Um, I can really, you know, get into the swing of things. Um, for the marketing activities, I have to sit at my desk because I have my files, I have, you know, everything that I need at my desk. 
So I just I have to that's more of a conscious and deliberate um, form of concentration. I really I have to, you know, sometimes I'll set a timer, I'll look at the clock and I say, okay, 20 minutes for this marketing activity, no checking email, um, don't get distracted by anything else. So I, I usually assign time to it. Gotcha. Uh, do you listen to music while you write or just the ambient noise going on around you? No, no music that I can't write um, if I listen to music. It's completely distracting. Usually when I hear a song, it brings me back to a particular time and place, particular memories or, you know, ideas. And if I'm not writing within that scope, that is distracting to me. Gotcha. 